Hello, Vinyl Community. This is Rich at Embarrassment of Riches, and uh, I'm a day late for making my March recent vinyl pickups video, but uh, two things came in today, so I made an addition. I've been watching everybody else's videos and really enjoying it. Everybody's got some cool stuff this past month, and um, I'm enjoying the stack I got this month. Started off really slow. The first two weeks of the month, I had maybe three or four records that had come in from pre-orders or from shopping on eBay or wherever else I buy things. And then it really picked up. So uh, here we go. First up, I'm hoping this is not another new vinyl obsession for me, but I think it might be, is a 7-inch Jukebox EP that they used to release back in the day. And it's just like it sounds. It's a 7-inch record with not just an A-side, B-side with one cut on each. This one here has five songs. Johnny Cash's performance at Folsom Prison. It's in great condition, and there are a whole lot of this type of stuff. I've got a want list that's pretty sick already on these Jukebox 45s. So don't go jumping in front of me in line on getting any of these, but they're pretty cool. Next up, I got two from the Atlantic 75 releases that they've put out. I wasn't all that excited about the original lists they put out, but as time has gone by, I've become a bit more interested. And you know, the first one, self-titled Crosby, Stills & Nash. Always a classic. I haven't opened up and listened yet, but I've heard very good things about it. So I'm optimistic. And next up for the Atlantic 75 series is Sturgill Simpson's A Sailor's Guide to Earth. This is a record I haven't listened to very much. I haven't owned it before, but I have it digitally. And I'm going to give it a solid new listen with fresh ears this time. I am a big fan of Sturgill Simpson, so maybe this one just kind of flew under the radar for a little bit when it first came out. I've got high hopes. There's going to be a couple in here that I'm on my third or more version of because I'm that kind of person that buys multiple copies and keeps trying to get a better and better version of it. And uh, starting with one of my favorite Peter Gabriel records, Melt. I've probably got four of these now. And even though the jacket looks kind of beat up, the vinyl is very minty. So it's always good to have these. I love me some Peter Gabriel, as you'll see as I go through this stack. And another one, A Blast from the Past. I always thought was an excellent record, but uh, kind of faded into obscurity in the last 20, 30 years or so. General Public's All the Rage. I love this record. Here's another one that I seem to be the only person out of everyone I know that loves. It's Renegade Soundwaves, Cocaine Sex. This was one of my favorite 12-inch singles from back in the day. I think the beat is super sick. The remixes are really good. I'm not often a fan of remixes. But I think Renegade Soundwave had some really clean cuts, and I think they're underappreciated. So I get these whenever I can, too, especially if the price is right. This was only 5 bucks. And there were three records from Vinyl Me Please this month, and as always, I'm pretty happy to get them. They haven't let me down yet. It's been a few years. My second copy of Phases and Stages from Willie. This is a solid album. I think I'm going to keep this one to give as a gift later on. Excellent, and it comes with a print. I don't know if the reflection shows anything, but uh, it's, a, it's a pretty excellent print. This next one is based solely upon the recommendation of Brian from Embryonic Robot, our friend in Canada, and it's a Japan Droids record, one I'm not familiar with, but he spoke so highly of them that it really made me want to finally give this band a chance because I had heard the name for a number of years and just never, never gave it a try. So, Brian, if I don't like this one, I will be contacting the Canadian consulate. We want to avoid an international incident at all costs. And last one for Vinyl Me Please, Bob Willis and his Texas Playboys, unreleased cuts from the 1940s. I'm really looking forward to this one because I love bluegrass. Next is another one. Oof, I must have four or five of these by this point. And this cover and back do look pretty toe up. Yeah, it smells kind of funky too, but this this vinyl inside is minty. It is really good, and it might just be the best copy I own of this classic record. I still listen to this on the regular. 
And where have we seen this dude before? Another one. This is probably, I guess, next to so my favorite Peter Gabriel record. But price point was right. If I see these for anything under $10 in great, great condition, chances are I'm going to pick it up. And uh, this one looks great. Original inner sleeve, no complaints. As a parenthetical aside, I bought a version of this a few years ago at Phonolux in Nashville. It was a 200 gram half speed remaster, super deluxe. This thing weighed a fucking pound and it was sealed. It was already a few years old by that point. And I've never bought a 200 gram record and I don't think I have since, but both of the records were fucking warped. So yeah, I don't I don't buy into the 180 gram, 200 gram bullshit. It's just it's a marketing tactic. This is one I also have as well, but again, I've upgraded in condition. Changes one Bowie, brilliant greatest hits record. I think everybody knows about this one. Just look at that selection of titles on here. You cannot go wrong with Changes One. This one is a brand new one. I don't have any of these, although I do have a few Talking Heads records. This is a promo for True Stories. And uh, I can't wait to give it a listen. I've only ever heard it as an MP3 or a FLAC file. And uh, hopefully this is uh, me getting on my way to completing the discography of this group. Love it. Love it. And here's another familiar face. Monsieur Peter Gabriel. His new record, I.O. This is the Bright Side Mixes version. I, I really took a while to get on this. I remember when he was releasing the records or the, uh, the songs one every month this last year and they sounded fine to me, but to hear them in the totality of the album really brings them together and it's brilliant. I'll probably buy the dark side mixes pretty soon too, just to, to be a completionist asshole, but uh, home run yet again from Mr. Peter Gabriel. And this one, didn't have to fight too much for I think I got the single for two dollars but it's the Gap Band early in the morning and if you grew up in an area like I did in the 1980s you heard this one all the time coming out of houses including mine but I never had the 12 inch single this thing sounds pretty crisp I really like the Gap Band and look at this Paris the hate the hate made this one takes me way back. This is a promo. I, I don't really give a shit about promos. You know, I don't seek them out and pay extra money for them, but it's nice nice to get them once in a while. But this is from Paris's first record from way back, and it's brilliant. I would really love to get all of these singles, but uh, they are increasingly hard to find. I just got lucky to find this one for under five bucks. Totally lucky. And right here we have Earth, Wind, and Fire, Last Days in Time. This is the only one I was missing from completing the discography of this wonderful group. I'm a big fan. I cannot wait to listen to this one. It looks so good. Hmm. And here's an awesome one that I'm going to really, really enjoy. American Legion from the great Greg Graffin, lead singer of Bad Religion. He does uh, his solo records a bit softer than you will hear from Bad Religion. But the lyrics are just as intense and the songs are just as incredible good stuff. And this is a repress because I didn't have the opportunity or need to spend 100, 150 bucks to get the original. Maybe someday. Very likely someday. This one, I think I'm on my third or fourth of because every time I see this classic for under 10 bucks, you bet your ass I'm going to buy it. This one mystifies me how it can go so cheaply because this is a true milestone in 80s hip-hop. Every song on here is a crushing single, and I played this thing to death when I was a kid, and uh, I've been known to do the same here, too. Both my sons dig it, so they'll be happy I have multiple copies as well. And here's one that uh, Mrs. Embarrassment of Riches and I can agree on. Stray Cats, Rant and Rave. This is good stuff. This is actually... The only Stray Cats record that I do have. I don't know. I mean, I like them. I really like them. I just I just haven't picked them up. I mean, there's, there's just too many artists and too many records. You kind of grab what you can when you can. But this is really good. I've listened to it already, and I love it. I mean, of course, I've, I heard it damn near 40 years ago, I guess. But it's really, really good. And now I'm going to be on the lookout 
throw the Stray Cats records because I'm a completionist. The last one here is the first one that arrived in March. It's my copy of Aladdin Sane from David Bowie. It does have some water damage along the bottom and smells a bit funky. But again, I'm not as concerned with what the cover looks like or smells like, fucking obviously, as long as the vinyl is in really good condition. And this one is super sharp and it sounds better than the kind of beater um, version I bought a few months ago. So, yeah, that's March for Embarrassment of Riches. I hope everybody else had as good a month as I had because this month turned out to be pretty fucking awesome. And uh, I'm trying to record this and edit it before we go on vacation tomorrow. We'll be gone for a week. And of course, you know, I'm going to try to do some record shopping when we're at our destination. So I'll try to upload some uh, quick little videos tomorrow of uh, how the trip goes. And I'll talk to you all later. Love you, vinyl community. Take care of each other. Apparently I love throwing it on the fucking floor too. Jesus.